The Tasadei are an indigenous people of the Philippine island of Mindanao. They are considered to belong to the Lumad group, along with the other indigenous groups on the island. They attracted widespread media attention in 1971, when a journalist of the Manila Associated Press Bureau chief reported their discovery, amid apparent Stone Age technology and in complete isolation from the rest of Philippine society. They again attracted attention in the 1980s when some accused the Tasaday living in the jungle and speaking in their dialect as being part of an elaborate hoax, and doubt was raised about their isolation and even about being a separate ethnic group. Further research has tended to support there being a tribe that was isolated until 1971 and that lived as nomadic hunter-gatherers. The Tasaday language is distinct from that of neighboring tribes, and linguists believe it probably split from the adjacent Manobo languages 200 years ago. Background Manuel Elizaldi was the head of PANAMIN, the Philippine government agency created in 1968 to protect the interests of cultural minorities. He was the son of a wealthy father of Spanish lineage and an American mother. He was a known crony of the late Philippine dictator Marcos. He took credit for discovering the Tasaday, which he did on June 7, 1971, shortly after a local barefoot blit hunter told him of a sporadic contact over the years with a handful of primitive forest dwellers. He released this to the media a month later, and many excited people began the long task of clearing the thickest forest in the world. Weeks later, Visitor's Way was blocked by PANAMIN guards who answered to Elizaldi alone and allowed only a select group of the visitors to meet them. Introduction of the Tasaday Elizaldi brought the Tasaday to the attention of PANAMIN, which funded all efforts to find, visit, and study the Tasaday. With a small group including Elizaldi's bodyguard, helicopter pilot, a doctor, a 19-year-old Yale student named Edith Terry, and local tribesmen for interpreting attempts, Elizaldi met the Tasaday in an arranged clearing at the edge of the forest in June 1971. In March 1972, another meeting occurred between the Tasaday, Elizaldi, and members of the press and media including the Associated Press and the National Geographic Society, this time at the Tasaday's secluded cave home site. This meeting was popularly reported by Kenneth McLeish in the August 1972 issue of National Geographic, which featured on its cover a photograph by photojournalist John Lanois of a Tasaday boy climbing vines. Since these first meetings and reports, the group was subject to a great deal of further publicity, including a National Geographic documentary, The Last Tribes of Mindanao, shown December 1, 1972. Visitors included Charles A. Lindbergh and Gina Lolobrigida. Ban on Visitation in April 1972, Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos, at the behest of PANAMIN and Lindbergh, declared 19,000 acres 182 square kilometers of land surrounding the Tasaday's ancestral caves as the Tasaday, Manobo Blit Preserve. By this time, 11 anthropologists had studied the Tasaday in the field, but none for more than six weeks, and in 1976, Marcos closed the preserve to all visitors. The reason for the ban was the martial law the country was under, outsiders were not welcome because that put the Marcos regime under more scrutiny. Elizaldi's flight and return In 1983, some time after the assassination of Philippine opposition political leader Benigno Aquino Jr., Elizaldi fled the Philippines. It had been rumored that he fled with and eventually squandered millions of dollars from a foundation set up to protect the Tasaday. Elizaldi returned to the Philippines in 1987 and stayed until his death on May 3, 1997, of leukemia. During this time, from 1987 to 1990, Elizaldi claimed he'd spent more than one million U.S. dollars of Tasaday non-profit funds. During this time, Elizaldi also founded the Tasaday Community Care Foundation, or TCCF. Controversy After President Marcos was deposed in 1986, Swiss anthropologist and journalist Oswald Iden, accompanied by Joey Lozano, a journalist from South Cotabato, and Datu Galing Tikau, a member of the T. 
Boli tried to serve as chief translator, though he did not speak Tassaday, made an unauthorized visit to the Tassaday Caves where they spent about two hours with six Tassaday. Upon returning from the forest, Aydin and Lozano reported the caves deserted and further claimed the Tassaday were simply members of known local tribes who put on the appearance of living a Stone Age lifestyle under pressure from Elizaldi. Many local tribesmen admitted to pretending to be Tassaday in order to gain funds, reputation, and other items. In the mid 1990s, Professor Lawrence A. Reed, U., of Hawaii I, Department of Linguistics, Emeritus, wrote that he spent ten months with the Tassaday and surrounding linguistic groups 1993 and has concluded that they probably were as isolated as they claim, that they were indeed unfamiliar with agriculture, that their language was a different dialect from that spoken by the closest neighboring group, and that there was no hoax perpetrated by the original group that reported their existence, in his paper. Linguistic Archaeology, Tracking Down the Tassaday Language Reed states that, although he originally thought that an individual Tassaday named Balayam was fabricating words, after a detailed analysis of the linguistic evidence he found that around 300 of Balayam S forms were actually used in Kalaman Valley Manobo languages, a place Balayam had never visited. He also mentions that a similar group was later found and confirmed to be living as hunter gatherers without contact to other tribes. The Tassaday were likely a separate group living as gatherers deep in the jungle, who were rarely in contact or trade with the neighboring people, but that they were not a Stone Age culture. References External links Tossaday website Pages at Oregon State about the Tossaday